So my camera just shut off again. It's definitely not uh, being ultra reliable today. So uh, anyhow, got some late arrivals uh, showing up here at the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Looks like uh, someone I know there. Someone who's actually been quite uh, nasty and in my face and even whacked me with her cane in the past. That's her name, Vera Freud, I believe, in the white coat. So yes, yeah, so one of the uh, Montreal Unitarians who has uh, assaulted me. I'd be the first to say it was a comparatively minor assault, just whacking me with her cane, but it doesn't change the fact that it's an assault. Um, so anyhow, um, yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I try to have a camera running pretty well constantly because uh, there are occasions when I am assaulted by Montreal Unitarians. Uh, there are times when Montreal Unitarians uh, steal or vandalize my picket signs as recently as uh, March 18th, uh, just over a month ago. Uh, Sue Montgomery uh, showed up here and uh, kicked down all of my picket signs and kicked them into the street and into the bike lane and even after I put some of them back up again she threw them into the street again. So it was nice to be able to record uh, Montreal's uh, deputy mayor making a total fool of herself uh, and to be able to put that uh, video on YouTube for anyone to see how Sue Montgomery is not only passively complicit in Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy abuse cover-up efforts, but she actively involves herself in uh, trying to uh, shut down my protest and uh, hide my picket signs and uh, so on. Uh, because in addition to kicking down, uh, kicking my picket signs into the street and so on, uh, Sue Montgomery was uh, on the phone to the SPVM trying to get me arrested. Uh, that didn't work out quite as she had hoped. The SPVM uh, showed up and I actually had a you know, older police officer, like my age or older I'd say, uh, I'd say mid to late 50s, uh, maybe even early 60s, obviously a uh, you know, veteran, experienced cop, along with his younger female partner who did most of the talking with Sue Montgomery. And uh, you know, we, we had a little discussion and I was, I was detained, I wasn't actually arrested but I was detained while the uh, two SPVM officers did a little investigation to try and determine if I was actually violating court conditions that had been placed on me by a previous uh, bullshit arrest, uh, thanks to Sue Montgomery making a bullshit complaint to the SPVM about alleged criminal harassment. Um, and uh, the police were able to determine uh, that I had not in fact uh, broken the court conditions and so I was able to go on, you know, leave uh, freely and uh, able to attend the St. Patrick's Day Parade later that day. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that Sue Montgomery uh, vandalized my picket signs, threw them into the street, kicked them into the street in an effort to prevent people from reading what is said on them essentially an act of uh, censorship and trying to hide the truth that is on these picket signs. Um, and on top of that, you know, trying to get me arrested for breach of conditions, you know, which could have had me, you know, physically taken away under arrest. And who knows, you know, maybe stuck in a jail cell for some hours or maybe even overnight. Um, so, and I, you know, if I'd been arrested, I certainly would not have been able to attend the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade, which is something of a tradition for me. So Sue Montgomery, yeah, definitely a knowing and willful participant in uh, Unitarian Universalist efforts to cover up and deny pedophilia and rape, amongst other clergy abuse. Um, so it's nice to have video of that. And uh, it's unfortunate that the news media didn't uh, air that video to uh, Montrealers yet. I think uh, I think that was certainly uh, something that uh, Montrealers have a right to know about. Um, but you know, Sue being the former 
justice reporter for the Gazette has lots of friends in the media, and if she doesn't have friends in the media, well, she has uh, other influence and so on, um, and she certainly has uh, wielded her influence. I'm protesting against uh, clergy abuse, including uh, abuse of children, uh, and more specifically the cover-up. You know, every, every church is going to have a certain number of, you know, pedophiles and rapists yeah, yeah, and abuse yeah, of exactly. children and so on. But, but it's one thing to have that; it's another thing to try and hide it. Yeah, and, exactly. and they're trying to hide it. So, right. and, and there were there were reports from that church, not the church locally, which doesn't mean there there isn't any. Yeah, there's, 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 there's actually some indications that there may. But no, I'm talking about cases where people were convicted of pedophilia and rape and sentenced to jail in the United States. Okay, and then they yeah. cover it up. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, when they've, they've, locally, they've tried to shut down my protest. They've had me arrested on bullshit criminal charges to, you know, uh, try to stop it. And, uh, so yeah. now you're back. I'm back, yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank I'm you. <laughs> there we go. Just had a little uh, free and responsible search for truth and meaning. And yes, it was recorded. That's nice. Uh, so this guy was... Uh, you know, talking, and uh, he wanted to know uh, what it was about. So I, I gave him the child abuse aspect because it is Child Abuse Awareness Month. I mean, there's other issues that are worth protesting as well, uh, such as the anti-religious intolerance and bigotry and so on. Uh, but, you know, sticking with the theme of uh, abuse of children, since it is uh, Child Abuse uh, Prevention Month. And then, yes, you know, the, as far as the local church goes. You know, I'm not aware of anyone who's being charged, tried, and convicted of pedophilia. Um, but there are some indications, you know, basically circumstantial evidence uh, which suggests that uh, there may have been, you know, some abuse of children, not necessarily sexual abuse, um, but other abusive treatment of children locally. Um, but because I can't, you know, prove it, because I can't absolutely, you know, prove it beyond reasonable doubt, I, I basically, you know, I like to stick to things that I can say, and this is absolutely true. This is supported by, you know, court documents and, uh, and media reports and so on and so forth. Uh, as much as possible, you know, I try to stick to absolutely incontrovertible things, you know. If I wanted to get into all kinds of uh, unsubstantiated rumors, believe me, there's a lot more I could uh, talk about. But obviously I'm trying to avoid being uh, discredited. I'm trying to avoid uh, being uh, accused of, you know, slander and libel and so on. Uh, um, so, you know, I, I stick to things that are very, very solid and uh, pretty well incontrovertible, um, you know, to avoid uh, any kind of uh, discrediting. Um, so, that being said, however, uh, there's, there's, you know, I, I, I got a feeling based on certain indications that, uh, that uh, the Unitarian Church of Montreal may not be uh, squeaky clean on the uh, child abuse front or indeed on the uh, clergy sexual misconduct front. Uh, there's some indications that, uh, that there could have been uh, some... Uh, clergy sexual misconduct here at the Unitarian Church of Montreal in the past as well. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's not something I can prove uh, beyond reasonable doubt at this point in time, so, so I stick to what I can prove. 
And what I can prove, uh, beyond reasonable doubt, is uh, that a certain number of uh, Unitarian Universalist ministers, and indeed a certain number of Unitarian Universalist uh, Sunday School teachers, have in fact been uh, charged, tried, and convicted of what the uh, Unitarian Universalist Association's Canadian attorney describes as such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. Um, and I can also prove that the Unitarian Universalist Association tried to intimidate me into removing blog posts that uh, told this readily verifiable truth by pretending that my blog posts were unfounded and vicious when they were by no means unfounded, and pretending that they amounted to uh, the criminal act of blasphemous libel, which also was not true. Um, and so on. And I can also prove that uh, Sue Montgomery uh, has never at any time, you know, spoken out against any of the uh, child abuse uh, that has occurred in the Unitarian Universalist uh, religious community. She's never at any time condemned the, uh, the attempts to cover up uh, clergy abuse, whether of children or adults. Um, and in fact, she's... Uh, knowingly and willfully participated in efforts to shut down my protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal and so on. So uh, I'll stick to things that I can prove beyond reasonable doubt. Um, plenty of that. <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to protest here. I think we're pretty much done for today. I think we've had a reasonably successful protest. Not a whole lot of interactions, but there was that recent interaction there. Um, and uh, yeah, I see that I'm at 12 minutes of uh, recording time. So I think I'll go for a few more minutes and, you know, maybe these people up ahead, let them pass. If nothing of any particular interest transpires, I think I'll uh, call it a day. So, uh, anyhow, I may come back this evening because there's this uh, fundraising event at 7, and it includes, actually, participation by one of the Montreal Unitarians who have physically assaulted me. Uh, Margot Ellis is his one of the Montreal Unitarians who is, has in fact assaulted me and, and to make matters worse she even made a false claim to the police that I had assaulted her uh, or it appears that way anyway um, uh, so yeah Margot Ellis I think uh, I think she needs to be reminded of her own uh, bad behavior and of course the whole the whole thing with public events is that the protest is seen not just by Montreal Unitarians, you know, not just by you know, ordinary passers-by, but it's seen by people, you know, coming to specifically this fundraiser, people who may have this, you know, image of Unitarian Universalism as this, you know, nicey-nice uh, religious community, uh, not be aware of the uh, see me underside of Unitarian Universalism. Uh, so when it's a fundraising event or whatever, a public event like this, uh, I actually do uh, like to come and protest. So I think I, I may be here like at around six o'clock, uh, you know, prior to the uh, event uh, starting. Oh, I see my sensors heating up. I see we're at 14 minutes of time here. So yeah, I think we're wrapping this up and uh, I think, however, that I will uh, come back at, uh, at uh, six-ish and protest, uh, you know, as people are entering the church for this uh, fundraising event. So, that is that.